Hello again, my lovely morons. I hope you don't mind being called lovely. Today we will be doing two kanji, two Christmas colored kanji. This is winter series, so I chose a red and green, of course. I think those are pretty Christmassy. And it's a seven stroke kanji, and I've decided to change the counting at the end. Instead of using numbers, uh, I will indicate the number of strokes using kanji. So this is nana kaku. Now you may have noticed that the top of the kanji, as we watch this in slow motion, is a three-stroke kanji as well. That's do, or also pronounced to, and the onyomi, or I'm sorry, kunyomi, is tsuchi. The onyomi is do and to. And it looks like a cross, doesn't it? It actually means land or dirt. So a good story you might make to remember the meaning of this kanji is a cross or a grave and blood seeking, seeping into the ground. What color is blood? But of course, red. So that is the first kanji we'll be learning. The next kanji is green. It's a little bit more complicated, actually doubly complicated. It's 14 strokes, not seven. But the good news is that the left side of the kanji, which is the first thing you write, usually we write from left to right and top to bottom from out to in. The left side of the kanji is also a kanji, which we'll see in a few minutes. That's a uh, ito, which means thread or silk. And that's the whole kanji, ju yong kaku, or 14 strokes. Let's see it again in slow motion, or slow-mo. One, two, three, four, and then the sides of it, five and six. And these first six strokes make up the radical, in this case, of silk or thread. The onri reading is chi, and the kun reading is ito, which means thread, ito. And the top of the kanji looks a little bit like yo, the katakana for yo, doesn't it? And the bottom of the kanji, notice that the strokes are separated, so be careful. They're not one stroke, like in water. It looks a little bit like water, but the stroke count is different. And that is the kanji for green. Okay, now let's look at the kanji itself. The kanji for red, as you can see on the top left in the yellow. The meaning is simply red. The onyomi reading, the on reading or onyomi, reading and yomi has the same meaning is seki or shaku. Seki you will see, shaku you don't see very much. The kun yomi or kun reading is aka, but often this kanji will be paired with hiragana to make a word like akai, which actually means red, the adjective for red, or verbs akaramu or akurameru, which means to redden or to make something red. Now let's look at green. Ironically, the more difficult kanji has fewer readings. The on reading is ryoku or roku, and the kun reading is simply midori. And now let's look at some examples of both red and green. Akai, red. Sekihan, red rice, which uh, you will find in convenience stores, beans and rice. Um, something that you might be interested in is that this dish is often uh, served or supposed is supposed to be served to young ladies when they get their first uh, monthly visitor, if you know what I mean. If you're in the red, you owe money, then we say akaji. And of course, you probably know akachan, akachan, which is a baby. And if you're interested in night vision, you will probably need something that can deal with sekigai sen or infrared rays. So those are your red examples. And for green, we have the standard midori, which is just the kanji alone. Notice there's no hiragana following it like in red. With red, it's aka, the kanji aka, and then the hiragana i, akai. In this case, just midori is the kanji itself. No extra hiragana needed. Uh, midori iro, midori iro is also the, the, uh, the another word for green. Um, this is often used for green leaves as well. And the kanji iro there means color, actually. Shinryoku means new green leaves, and in spring you'll often hear the news say Shinryoku no kisetsu, which means it is the season 
of young green things. A national holiday in Japan is Midori no Hi, which is every year on May 4th. And that's the end of this mini kanji lesson. Thanks for watching, as always. And a few people have asked me about the music. The, the music I use is from Kevin MacLeod's site, incompetech.com. He provides royalty-free music. Uh, of course, he accepts donations. So check out that site if you're interested. And thanks always for supporting Japanese for Morons with your comments, ratings, and sharing. You know what to do, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in another video.